Hey guys, how you doing? Minas and Control. My name is Cisa and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be starting a new show. I'm so, so, so excited about this one. As the title says, I'll be reacting to the first episode of Awesome Ranking. Yes, I'm so excited about this one because it's been on my radar for a while now. Like the art style looks super interesting. It's done by Wit Studio, so of course it's gonna be like good quality animation. And in the beginning, I never heard about this show, but then suddenly my brother started talking about it. He was very excited about the show, and he told me just a tiny bit about it, but he wanted to tell me so much more about the story, and I was like, stop, stop, don't spoil anything. I'm still planning to watch it on my own, so yeah, he hasn't told me much, so I don't know what the story is about. I already heard all of the openings and endings, and I am obsessed with the songs. The openings and endings are so, so good. Like, I haven't seen them. I've only heard the songs, but they're so good. I've already been playing them non-stop for months now. I don't know when they came out, but yeah, I've been listening to them for a while now and I still listen to them up to this day. So that's all about this show that I know so far. The rest is completely new to me, but I'm still so excited. I'm happy that it got many votes on the poll on my Patreon. So yeah, it, it got tied with Death Note and eventually the people over on YouTube voted more for Death Note. So that's why I started with that one first. But I already promised you guys that I would watch the show as well. So that's where we are at right now, you know. Since I just finished Bunny Girl Senpai. This is a good moment to start with a new show. And I'm glad that is also my ranking this time. Yes, I've already mentioned. I'm just super intrigued by the animation style. It looks so unique. Like very much like children picture book ish from what i've seen so far and which is not much but yeah that's kind of the, the vibe i got from it and yeah that's kind of it you know so i don't have much more to say so without further ado let's get right into the episode so let's go all right i'm ready so i'm gonna start the episode in three two one go Blix. Oh, we're going straight into it. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we just get an explanation of the show's title right away. Oh, that face is so cute. And he's so small. Or is she just that big? <laughs> oh no, he's being laughed at. Okay, that was a very, a very, very interesting intro. And this is the opening, the first opening. This song is so much fun. And it's also sung by one of my favorite bands ever, King New. They're so, so good. I've been following them since they did the ending of Banana Fish. That, oh, I love that song as well. But then I started checking out their other music as well and I instantly became a fan. I'm not the biggest fan of this song in particular, but it's still so much fun. There's this very fun vibe. Yeah, and the opening shows various characters. But not much. They're mostly showing like sceneries and stuff. And I'm guessing that this boy, <laughs> this boy, is <laughs> also the title of the intro. But yeah, that's, that is the main character. And we see this black 
monster thing. I don't know what it is, but it looks very intriguing as well. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention, but I'm sorry if I sound a bit strange today. Like my voice is a bit gone because of a cold, but I hope I get better soon. All right, here we go. I'm instantly fan, he's so cute. And the flute in the background. It right offsets the mood, you know? It's very sweet. Like very, very much fairy tale ish. Oh, and that's the black thing. Ignored. <laughs> oh, it got a sword? Oh. oh, really? He's dead? So that's how he ended up walking through the <laughs> town in his unaware. <gasps> Does this boy understand that he was just threatened? And that's how we ended up in this situation. Everyone just laughing at him, which I don't understand. It's just a kid in this underwear. Okay, but maybe because, oh, so. All right, he's the prince, but the prince is walking around in this underwear, which is still fine. He's still just a kid, you know? Dame oggi. I see, that's like his public image <laughs> oh and he came back in more expensive clothes or is he <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's such a big soft boy or small soft boy. <laughs> oh, he doesn't matter. Oh, he's blushing a bit. Bochi? <laughs> he's so cute and he's walking away naked again. Again, with the expensive clothes. Yeah, it looks more and more extravagant each time. He 
Yeah, he's blushing. <laughs> Look at him, he's so cute. Yeah, I wonder, like, the people who work at the castle and who dress him, don't they wonder, like, where his clothes are going, you know? And he's leaving again in his underwear. <laughs> oh man, I I really really like this story. No, it kind of reminds me of that um story I used to hear a lot as a kid. You know about that one king who also got tricked by wearing like super expensive clothes and turned out. He, he he wasn't wearing anything. What was that story called? Yeah, how can he say that he can't talk if he can't talk? These kids. Okay. When oh, they're all part of the big four. Okay. Oh, so he knows like a bit of sign language as well, which is impressive for a little kid. Yeah, of course she prefers his own uh she prefers her own son to become king. Oh, she's planning to execute everyone. <laughs> Oh, he seems kind. The one who is translating for him. Oh. Oh, when he's by himself, he has to let it out sometimes, you know? Exactly. Wait, what was that green thing I saw in the corner? Oh, it was a snake. 
Hmm, so it's from something like a shadow clan. Interesting. <laughs> There's such a huge, heavy looking door. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh my god, that is actually adorable. Having like this little door you can go through. That's the king. Oh, we have ogres. Oh my god, that's a lot. Oh, and we have giants. Oh, wow. Okay, we suddenly got like a serious backstory. Oh, so that was like the first king, I guess. Or is it that guy? Maybe that's that guy? Yeah, it's the same guy, right? No, but he was the seventh king. Uh, I don't know. Oh no. Oh, I'm guessing that he doesn't have long to live. He escaped. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of snakes. Nah. Okay, we're going to his training. Oh, so that's Prince Dida. Okay. Oh, yeah, and his voice actor is so fitting. That's Kajiyuki, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he seems very confident. <laughs> Ooh, 
look at that look. Now Dorman's getting serious against the kid. <laughs> oh, look at Butch. Even he's getting excited by looking that battle. Wow, he's so serious, though. Hmm. No. Interesting. Well, let's see. Maybe, maybe Butch has like a completely different fighting style, which I'm sure is the case. That's, that's how it always starts, right? Like by underestimating our main character. Hmm. Okay. Okay, let's see. So something happened back then as well. Yeah. Who is this guy? <laughs> Just balancing on one spear? Hey! <laughs> oh, so cute. Ooh. Oh, wow. As if he can read all these snakes and opponents' moves. Hi! <laughs> oh my god, even the hit is so soft. <laughs> But he's so happy that he landed a hit. Bochi! Oh, and that's how he ended. Oh, but then we have this ending. Oh my gosh, this is a god tier ending. I'm already obsessed with this song. This is probably like one of the best endings of the year. Already. Oh, but this was such a good first episode. I'm already invested. I mean, I already got teared up, you know, seeing Bochi cry on his own in his room. I was like, oh, I just wanted to give him a hug. Yeah, this song is so good. <sighs> oh. 
All right, so that was episode one of Awesome Ranking, and oh my gosh, this was such a good start of the show. Like, we already know a lot. Like, we know our main character, Bochi, and his personality, his circumstances. We already got to know him quite well, as well as the characters around him, the current queen and the second prince, Daida as well as the current king, Bosse, and and Kage, our, our black monster. Yeah, there, there are many characters introduced. I don't think I remembered all of them right away. But we already got, kind of have a good idea of Bochi's image, you know, his public image. How the people, the citizens in the country view him as. Like, they see him as a, a, a failure, you know? Just an outcast because he can't talk, he can't hear, and he acts strange, you know? Just walking around the town in his underwear. Yeah, that's not like the best way to act if you want to uplift your image, you know? Walking around the city naked. But as I said, like, it's okay for little kids to do that, you know? It's not something that adults should be laughing at, you know? That's just low, but... For the sake of the story, okay, I accept it. And as I've said it before, like there's this story, the, this children's story that it, I got reminded of. This king that gets tricked into buying a very, very extravagant, expensive clothes that um that got custom made by a certain tailor, and only like smart people could see his clothes or something like that. And the king couldn't see it himself, but he was embarrassed to admit that he was too stupid to not being able to see his own clothes that was being made for him. But he still got tricked into wearing them throughout the city. And no one could see it, you know. It was just, he was walking around naked, not knowing that he wasn't wearing any clothes. There was this story, what is it called? But it reminded me of that story when I saw Bochi walking around in his underwear, you know? Like, his reasons were completely different, of course. Like, he just gave his clothes to Kage. And then as a gift, you know, like, even though he was threatened, you know, he was threatened to give his clothes because he didn't have any money with him. But Bochi was like, sure, you want my clothes? Here you go ahead. <laughs> like, Bochi didn't notice, like, the ill intentions behind it. Which just shows how kind Bochi is, you know? And he's smart. Like, he just doesn't let anyone know that he's meeting up with this black shadowy thing, you know? I He kind of understands that he has to keep it a secret somehow. That's why he lies that he's playing by himself, you know, when people ask like, yeah, why are you walking around naked? Where did your clothes go? But people just assume that he just already leaves the castle naked. But I was like, if I was the maid or someone else who dresses him, I would be wondering where all of his clothes went, you know? I don't know why no one wonders about that you know where did all his clothes go <laughs> all these expensive clothes but those are like minor details it's more about what um Bochi is doing how he's treated by everyone around him by the people in the castle you know yeah he's being treated kindly though by some of the people like people do care about him they very much adore him especially the king but not by everyone even though they adore him they also have their own worries because they see that Bochi is just not very much king-like, you know. He's very much compared to Daida, his stepbrother, who is the second prince, who is much more like a king, who resembles the current king a lot more in his fighting style and everything, and his attitude. So he's very much compared to Daida, and you can see that they're very much different. But you need that in this story, right? Like, there has to be someone that our main character needs to be compared to, to see, like, how differently they're being treated and viewed by the people around them. So overall, like, I... Just by this one episode, you just completely understand what the story is about. You understand all of the circumstances and personalities of the people around our main character, Bochi. 
So, for our first episode, it was very, very good. And even though I don't know where the story is going, as a first episode, I'm so on board with everything. I already adore Bocci. I love him so much. Like, this episode was so effective in making you love our main character. You know, I'm sure everyone after watching this one episode already adored Bocci. Just because he's been so kind, so cute, even though he cannot hear or talk. He's just trying to connect with people, make friends. He was just so happy to kind of sort of become friends with Kage, you know, just having someone to talk to who doesn't just judge you by your value as a prince or king. He was just so happy to found someone or something like that. So he was just so happy. But then he's still being treated so coldly by... The queen, for example, the people on the streets, the other children. And he's just holding it all back, you know. He's just pretending like he's fine, even though it hurts, obviously. So then when he's alone in his room, he kind of has to let it out, you know. And when I saw that, I also got tears in my eyes. I was like, oh, just, oh man, my motherly instinct just comes through you know so yeah that's how effective this episode already was in making us understand and love the main character so this show is already doing a great job i'm so curious to see how the story is gonna continue so yeah that's kind of it for this episode i really really enjoyed it so yeah that was my reaction i hope you enjoyed it as well so if you did please give this video a thumbs up and if you could see my other reaction videos, feel to check out my channel and subscribe. And if you can't wait to see my reaction to the next episodes, you can already find it on my Patreon where you can get early access. So if you're interested, please go check it out. You can find the link in the description box below. So in any case, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.